Today, I got two uncommon video cards for you. Few have heard about the BC160 and the Instinct MI50, and we haven't found any tests online. And since our video about repurposing the CMP40HX into the RTX 2070 was quite successful in terms of views, we decided to try something similar, except this time with AMD cards. During the second crypto mining boom, Team Red also produced mining solutions. They would cost thousands of dollars, but today no one really needs them, so you can find a truckload of those on AliExpress. We have been trying to make these cards operable for more than a week. We changed the BIOS, tried different drivers, and we still failed to launch any games except for World of Tanks. I get it that a potato game would run in a potato PC, still, it was quite weird. When trying to launch any other game or application, it would freeze immediately. But similar to how it was with the CMP cards, the answer lay on the surface. All we had to do was to get a good sleep. And so, after we got a good sleep, and also by sheer luck, we realized that the problem was in Windows. These cards just don't work under Windows 11. So now, let me go back in time a bit, and I will tell you everything in details. Let's start with this one, which has a turbine on it, and it says BC160. This is not NVIDIA, in which the index would refer to the hash rate for Ethereum. The AMD's index 160 doesn't mean literally anything. When mining, this card would output about 70 mega hashes, which is 10% more than the Radeon 6900 XT, which was the best at that time. Back in the days, AMD would rip off crypto miners big time. Such a GPU would cost two grand in 2021, whereas today you can find it on AliExpress for about $180. And it's not even refurbished. The seller doesn't do anything except for putting a sticker onto it. These cards were produced by the well-known brand XFX, the markings of which are found on both the board and the casing. These guys are simply reselling used cards. When selling regular desktop cards, they at least try to make them look good in order to confuse gillable buyers. But when selling cards for crypto miners, they don't even bother trying. This card arrived dirty, with a rusted heat pipe and a pile of dust inside. The thermal pads are still alive, but the thermal paste has long turned to stone. Therefore, such cards always need to be serviced immediately after purchase. After cleaning it, let's take a look at this extremely unusual chip. Neither AMD nor Nvidia designed mining cards from scratch. It's simply not viable. Ethereum needed fast video memory, but did not require a powerful GPU. Therefore, the AMD engineers chose the Navy 12 chip. This GPU got as many as 5 dies on it. The one in the center is an RDNA 1 GPU with 2304 compute units. This is the RX 5600 XT level. The large rectangles on the sides are stacks of extremely fast 8GB HBM2 memory with a huge 2048-bit bus. The two narrow chips are memory controllers. Out of the box, the RDNA architecture doesn't know how to work with HBM, so AMD had to resort to such a workaround. The coolant system also looks unusual. We're all used to seeing heat pipes, but here AMD decided to use a full-fledged evaporation chamber, and the heatsink is quite hefty. Let's see how well it can cool down a 150 watt video card. When plugging the BC160 into our PC, we realized it had no video outputs. AMD used Nvidia's approach here. During the mining boom, companies did everything they could to make such a GPU suitable only for crypto mining and nothing else. Therefore, this GPU requires a processor with integrated graphics. The motherboard doesn't know that this card can't output image, so you need to manually select the iGPU through the BIOS, otherwise your screen will stay off. In Windows, the BC160 is displayed in the Device Manager as well as in GPU-Z, confirming the use of the Navy 12 chip. Unlike Nvidia, AMD did not cut the bandwidth in any way. All 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes are available. But we have a problem with the drivers. This card was designed specifically for crypto mining under Linux. It was never meant to work under Windows, so Adrenaline simply doesn't know what this GPU is. So we had to do a long search. The BC160 was not the only GPU based on the Navy 12 chip. Tech Power Up knows about at least three more cards. The V520, V540, and Radian Pro 5600M. We dismissed the V540 right away. It's a double chip card with two Navy 12s, which never saw the light of day. And the few owners of pre-release samples have huge problems even on Linux. 
but the Radeon V520 was actively used by Amazon for their cloud service. Installing the server driver head-on, however, didn't give any results. If you unzip the .exe and install it forcibly through the device manager, GPU-Z will not display the fail rate and frequency. A third-party driver called R.ID didn't help either. The mobile Radeon Pro 5600M is based on the Navy 12 chip. It was used only in MacBooks. But Apple loved Windows back then. We unzipped the .exe from bootcamp and forcibly installed the drivers for the 5600M. And here the situation is like with the V520. GPU-Z shows a lot of blank spaces. So let's go hard on it. The only difference between the BC160 and the V520, judging by GPU-Z, is the revision of the chip. We made a backup of the native BIOS for our mining card and tried to install the firmware for the V520 found in the Tech Power Up database. And again, failure. I tried five different firmware installers in different modes and none of them worked, all referring to the image data being corrupt. Apparently, either GPU-Z fails to obtain dumps correctly, or the firmware installers simply don't know how to work with such a GPU. We were close to abandoning the idea of running this GPU under Windows, and that's when we found an unusual advice. Try installing the standard adrenaline utility through the .in file, but choose a Vega 56 or 64 GPU in it. And you know what? It worked. The driver installed successfully and GPU-Z displayed almost all the details. And this is weird, to be honest. There is very little in common between the BC160 and Vega64. Only 8GB of HBM2 memory is what matches. The rest of the specs differ dramatically. Vega runs on an older GCN architecture, whereas Navy is based on RDNA. The cords even have a different version of the PCIe bus. But still, for some reason, the driver for Vega works best. But, as I said before, the only game that actually launched on the BC is World of Tanks. Dota, CS2, Cyberpunk, Forza, they all froze immediately after launch. I tried disabling rebar and many other settings in the BIOS. I tried to run games in windowed mode, turned off all overlays. I tried launching them on the Intel graphics and then back on the BC. None of it helped. The games worked normally only in the background. As soon as you touch them, they would freeze. We tried combating this problem for four days, and honestly, I already started thinking of giving up. But at the very last moment, I plugged this video card into my Windows 10 PC, and a miracle happened. I don't know what the Indians at Microsoft did there, but under Windows 10, everything works smoothly. One caveat, Vega and Navy are too different to fully trust the monitoring results. Surprisingly, it displays the power consumption quite accurately. When running superposition, the card consumes about 100 watts, which matches the readings of the watt meter with an 80% efficiency power supply. But the heat in monitoring in Afterburner is lying to us. The noisy turbine and the large heat sink should easily dissipate 100 watts, but not when the chip's temperature is only 60 degrees. GPU-Z is more realistic here, about 70 degrees on average and 80 on the hotspots, which is far from overheating, but it's better to keep this in mind. Fine-tuning is not available, but there is nothing to tweak here. Everything works well out of the box. Later, we will run tests and compare our test subjects, but for now, let's take a look at the other card. AMD Instinct MI50 is a solution for servers. But AMD has released a special version of the MI50 specifically for China, which can be distinguished by a sticker with the inscription Radian 7 HBM2. Yes, in fact, this is a regular desktop Radian 7, only with server-grade cooling and one video output. And given the fast HBM2 memory, it becomes clear why AMD released such a card specifically for China and what kind of servers utilized it. All of this is confirmed by the teardown. Inside, we found a beautiful Vega 20 chip with 3840 stream processors and as much as 16GB HBM2 in 4 dies with a bandwidth of 4089 bits. This card is of course used. The graphite pads turned into dust which can be found everywhere inside. I even had to change the gloves. The cooling system is very similar to that of the BC160. It also has a large heatsink with an evaporation chamber, and there is a place for the turbine. The latter, however, is missing. I had to make an active cooling system of my own design. An attempt to make do with a couple of small turbines and fans failed miserably. Even at full speed, the temperature of the hotspot went beyond 110 degrees after a minute of stress testing. Perhaps I used too liquid a thermal paste. It was grisly. 
so I drove to my guys from Happy PC based in Kaliningrad, where we serviced the cord again. Replaced the pads, applied a the thicker thermal paste, but this did not help. The chip would still reach 100 degrees almost instantly, which is critical for a 5-year-old GPU. But we've come too far to give up. Meet the EFCC, the eco-friendly cooling case. This is our own design, not yet patented though. It blows like a hooker and sounds like a V12. An 80mm fan rotating at full speed, supported by two 40mm mini fans. At the same time, we slightly undervolted the cord with a small loss of frequency of 70 MHz and a decrease by 100 mV. Now the 300 watt Radian 7 consumes only 150 watts in superposition and heats up to 70 degrees on the chip and up to 100 on the hotspot. For cards with HBM2 memory, such a spread is okay. All the dies differ slightly in height, which is why the temperature delta is so big. It remains to connect the monitor through the adapter that was sent as part of the package. And we got our hands on a Radian 7, but for $100 cheaper. But it's too early to call it a day. The mini display port didn't work, even after changing the cable. We tried installing the BIOS for the Radian 7 Pro, which did not help either. The card demonstrated its server nature. It has PCIe 4.0 support, which however comes at the cost of those blank fields in GPU-Z. The display port output still refused to show any signs of life, so we rolled back to the bias for the regular Radian 7. Judging by the traces of soldering, we can guess that the seller also tried to restore the video output, or maybe on the contrary, destroyed it. But then what's the point of this cable they shipped it with? Okay, both cards are ready for work and games. Let's move on to the tests. Let's start with 3 Mark times Pi to understand the approximate level of performance. The BC160 scored 8000 points. The result is 7% higher than that of the RX 5600 XT with a similar number of compute units but slower GDDR6 memory. The 5700 XT has 10% more stream processors and is just as fast while consuming twice as much power. But the server grade instinct did not surprise. The result is about 9200 points, which is slightly more than the regular Radian 7 and on par with the 5700 XT. On average, both cards do not differ much from the popular RTX 3060 in benchmark. Let's start the game's test with Cyberpunk 2077, which maintains its position as one of the best benchmarks even three years after its release. We set the graphics settings to max with FSR 2 at quality and got about 75 FPS according to the benchmark on the BC160 with a power consumption of about 95 watts. Surprisingly, the MI50, which is much beefier in terms of compute units, is only 5% ahead, while consuming about 120 watts. That's the effect of the older Vega architecture. And don't worry about the temperature of 80 degrees. Since this card has a large range of values, we decided to display the hotspot value in our statistics. The average temperature on the chip in games is 15 to 20 degrees lower. What is most surprising is that the BC160, being actually a 5600 XT, turns out to be even faster than the full-fledged 5700 XT. That's what the live-given HBM2 does. But in any case, the newer RTX 3060 turns out to be the fastest, displaying 80 FPS according to the benchmark. Let's continue in the beautiful Mexican racing festival in Forza Horizon 5. At the extreme graphic settings tweaked by hands in 2K, the video memory utilization goes beyond 9GB. And the BC160 gives up. The game warns of lack of memory, the card begins to actively transfer data from RAM over the bus, the latter being already busy transferring video to the iGPU. The result is that the mining card has only 45 FPS on average, while the server instinct, thanks to 16GB, produces over 60. But if you lower the settings to just high, the problems go away completely. Both cards go neck to neck, producing 73 FPS according to the benchmark. In this game, the redesigned Radian 7 at maximum graphic settings is on par with the RX 5700 XT, but the RTX 3060 is again 10% ahead. But these custom cards are not devoid of issues. Alan Wake 2 has distinguished itself. This is the most technologically advanced game at the moment. It requires mesh shaders for fast operation. And although the developers improved performance on older GPUs in the latest patch, it did not help the instinct. The game works without half the textures and feels more like a horror game, but the architecturally newer BC160 is doing fine 
At high graphic settings in 1080p with FSR at quality, you can get 40 to 45 FPS. Apparently, fast video memory is not important for this game, so the RX 5700 XT with a higher number of compute units is ahead by 20%. For some reason, the BC160 fails in the Last of Us PC port. Yes, the game turned out to be overly demanding, but at the same time, it officially runs even on the AMD RX 400 series from 2016. Navy from 2020 should not have any problems. But the problems are hard not to see. The Last of Us runs with artifacts at any graphic settings. Playing the game that looks like this is out of question. However, the frame rate is quite good. You can get a stable 60 FPS. Perhaps the problem is caused by the non-native drivers for an older Vega GPU. Although the Radeon 7 is fine on this architecture, at maximum graphic settings in 1080p with FSR, you can get absolutely playable 50 to 60 FPS. There are no such problems in other games. The Soviet cyberpunk Atomic Heart is perfectly optimized, so you can easily aim for maximum graphics settings without upscaling. The BC160 and MI50 are very close to each other again, producing about 70 to 80 FPS on average. The RX 5700 XT and RTX 3060 are at the same level. In this game, it's interesting to compare power consumption and similar performance, and the cards with HBM2 memory are in the lead. 100 watts is quite enough for them. Even the RTX 3060, with the more recent 8 nanometer Ampere architecture, consumes one and a half times more. But beating the 5700 XT in terms of heat generation is a hard task. Let's continue to the Sony Far Cry 6 with HD textures enabled. After all, AMD advertised the Radeon 7 as a cord with 16 gigabytes of memory as a good reserve for the future. And this future has come. 8 gigabytes of video memory, even in Full HD with Ultra Graphics, is enough just barely. But the frame rate on both cords is still more than playable. 90 FPS on the BC160 and 100 on the MI50. So no need to use FSR 1. Let's finish with the medieval fairy tale about the Rat Plague. Surprisingly, Requiem plays perfectly well in Full HD with ultra graphic settings and upscaling at quality. Both cards are again close to each other, producing 60 FPS on average, even in the market location. Still, the game gives a good load on these GPUs. The MI50 sometimes goes beyond 120 watts, the hotspot showing above 80 degrees. It's hot, but for a Radeon with HBM, it's within the norm. And in the end, let's run through eSports which with these GPUs should play perfectly well even in 2K. And so it turned out. In the single-threaded Dota, at maximum graphic settings, both cards run cool, even during big encounters, producing over 100 FPS on average. In Counter-Strike 2, the situation is similar. Both GPUs easily perform at 100 FPS. If desired, you can reduce the graphic settings if this is not smooth enough for you. But World of Tanks managed to surprise. This game literally squeezed all the juices out of the MI-50. The card consumed as much as 150 watts, just like in superposition. As a result, the hotspots had high and reached 100 degrees, which is not surprising for the Radiant 7. Perhaps the EFCC of the second version would help, but I decided not to go for it. Tanks also became the only game that worked under Windows 11. And only it has a significant 20% FPS difference between the BC-160 and MI-50. And we don't know why. Write your guess in the comments. Thus, speaking of games, everything is surprisingly good. What's with productivity tasks? Formerly, both Vega and Navy support HIP rendering acceleration. But in practice, Blender utilizes only the CPU. And this situation is similar with the RX 5700. It's not surprising. If you need rendering, go for Team Green. In Photoshop and Premiere, the situation is the same. If the 5700 XT worked just fine, then the GPUs tested obviously have some issues with their media accelerators. The load graph shows saw teeth, and the Adobe software works unstably and often crashes. In short, such video cards are not suitable for productivity tasks. Let's put it all together now. Firstly, just like in the case of NVIDIA mining CMPs, the video outputs, even if they are present, do not function. So you definitely need a processor with integrated graphics. Intel CPUs are also suitable. The only caveat is that you need to monitor the drivers on AMD platforms. Install the drivers for both the iGPU and the dedicated GPU and restrict updates in the settings. Secondly, such cards after purchase require maintenance. 
First of all, disassemble, blow out coal dust, change thermal pads and thermal paste. Thirdly, such cords only work normally on Windows 10. Windows 11 only works for World of Tanks, but there are no problems with the drivers. The standard utility Adrenaline works for both video cords. Just remember that in the case of the BC-160, you need to choose Vega 56 or 64. There is no need to do any manipulations in the BIOS or solder the capacitors or something. Now let's talk about the cons. Firstly, such cords are 5 years old. They were used for crypto mining and their condition is often bad. There is no way of knowing how much resource they have left, and it's a lottery that you can easily lose. Secondly, the fast HBM2 memory is a problem. When one of the memory dies, dies, you will have to replace the entire GPU and you are very unlikely to find such a replacement. Thirdly, both cards are quite old architecturally, which causes unsolvable issues with some of the modern games, and as time goes on, they will only grow. Fourth, the MI50 comes without active cooling. You will have to make a DIY cooling system like our EFCC or maybe something better using a 3D printer. However, you can already find solutions with custom-made turbine cooling. And most importantly, I do not recommend getting such cords. The BC160 and MI50 cost about the same on average. They can be found for around $180, which makes sense. Their performance is similar, the mining cord is newer, but it comes with 8GB of memory, whilst the server-grade cord has 16. At the same time, the RX 5700 XT, with approximately the same performance, turns out to be $20-$30 to $30 cheaper. It's still trash in terms of quality, but it works with processors not equipped with an iGPU, has no artifacts in games, and can handle productivity tasks more or less. Unlike Nvidia's CMP, which requires some soldering works, but at least it's really worth it, the BC-160 and MI-50 are only worth getting if you can snatch one at a price significantly below the market. This was MK, my name is Mikhail Krashen, I'll see you again. Bye.